Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's live chat. I'm Angela Walters, and I am super excited to be spending a little bit of time with you talking about one of my favorite things, machine quilting. Um, normally, I'm on here Thursdays at 3 p.m. Central, but if you can't catch live, no worries. It'll be on my YouTube channel, so you can check out anytime. But if you are watching live, be sure to type in your questions as I'm demonstrating, because Jessica's here monitoring those, and she'll give them to me at the end to answer them. So. Today's setup might look just a little different because I'm going to be doing a live machine quilting demo. I'm going to show you how to create some designs with my Petunia ruler. So recently I came out with a set of three different rulers, Petunia, Dot, and Smiley, and each of the rulers has a downloadable PDF, um, but some of the designs aren't on there. So I'm going to show you a couple designs that aren't, and I'm going to demonstrate it on my sewing machine. So as you're watching, if you have any questions, of course, let me know. Now I know that not everybody quilts on their sewing machine, but the designs are gonna go together the same exact way. And it's just gonna be a really fun time to get to actually do a little bit of quilting instead of just talking during our live chat. All right, so here's what we're gonna be talking about. I'm gonna show you how to use Petunia to create an all over design, that kind of all over flowery shape. And we're gonna talk about not using the whole ruler. I mean, you may have paid for the whole ruler, but you don't have to use the whole thing. And then we're gonna move on to kind of a ribbon shape design right here. And this is gonna be great for borders or sashing or even in bigger areas. And then we'll talk about how to combine the circles to make some circles inside of circles. So just like any other live thing, I'm hoping that everything goes smoothly. I have my machine quilting gloves, my ruler, my little snips and my fun new quilting of my therapy lanyard. And so we're gonna get right to the fun stuff and, and talk about how to quilt the shape. Now, first thing I wanna point out, I am using a ruler foot on my sewing machine and on my long arm as well. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this shape that we're working with and I'm gonna rotate it in a bunch of different directions to make that all over design. Now the hardest part about this design or this technique is being comfortable with the fact that hmm, you're just gonna kind of make it up as you go. Remember, as long as I'm trying to fill in the area as much as possible, it's gonna look great. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the ruler to kind of audition where I think I want the design to go. And since I'm starting out, it, does, it can go any particular way. And I'm just gonna quilt along a few of those arcs. Um, I can do two or three or however many that I want. So I'm just gonna kind of push down and continue on. The reason I'm not going around the whole ruler is I don't want just an arc. I just want a partial one so I can change it up and, and go a different direction. So, here we can kind of see, let me rotate it for you, a little bit of those few, those first few arcs. Now, because I want this as an all over, I wanna go in a bunch of different directions. So from this point, I'm gonna reposition my ruler to go somewhere else. And that's what's great about these little needle stops is they kind of give me a, a set place to stop. Now, when I rotate it, I can kind of audition, oh, where do I want the next couple arcs to go? Um, how many do I wanna quilt? And then go ahead and put, uh, continue on. Huh? Uh-oh, like uh, too quiet? Yep. Oh, I bet the machine is too loud. How about this? Sorry guys, a little bit of audio issues there. Maybe this will be a little bit better, hopefully. Um, the machine, I'll try not to talk while the machine is quilting as well. So what I have here is I've got my first couple arcs and then a couple more in a different direction. So I'm getting, getting really comfortable with repositioning the ruler and rotating in no particular way, just however it feels comfortable to do. Now we can actually zoom in a little bit and see this a little bit closer if we want. And I'm just gonna go. Now I try to always stop either at a needle stop or the halfway point. That's gonna be a good kind of reminder to kind of help make sure that I'm always um, getting to a spot that's gonna be helpful. Now that I've got to that point, I'm gonna rotate, audition, kind of look and see what I'm working with and then quilt my next couple arcs. In the beginning, if this feels a little nerve wracking, you can always look see where those lines are gonna go, make sure they're not gonna run into anything, and then once you decide, yep, that looks good, you're gonna continue on. I guess a trick is not talking when I'm quilting, right? <laughs> All right, so now you can kind of see that design start to come together. I have those different arcs going in those different directions, starting to fill in the area, and there really is no rhyme or reason to this. I mean, you're just gonna kind of make it up. Now, I know that there are quilters out there that are like, no, I want a rule to follow. I promise the next design will be for you. Uh, but here, I'm just gonna continue going in all those different directions and, and filling in that area. Okay. 
Now, if you're not comfortable with machine quilting with rulers, no worries, I have a whole free motion challenge video series that shows you how to do that. But one of the, the quick tips that I can give you, no matter if you're using the petunia ruler or something else, is gonna be you wanna have your hand on each side of your needle if you're, if you're quilting on your sewing machine. So if I need to, I can reposition my hands mid-design or mid-shape. And since I'm rotating again, I can audition, figure out where I wanna go and continue on. We'll turn that a little bit, you can see a little bit more of that. So there's starting to fill in that area with this. Now, this is gonna be one of those designs that I'm definitely gonna use in a bigger area. I'm not gonna try to fit all those little um, arcs and flower shapes in a tiny area. It's gonna be too much maneuvering. But if you wanna do this as an all over, or in bigger areas, it is a lot of fun, especially as you're kind of, you know, getting, your, getting the hang of moving that ruler around. So what I love about this design or what makes it really gives it that nice all over look is all these arcs are the same size. And so as long as I get those lines fairly close to each other, it's gonna look, it's gonna look good. And try not to worry too much about, oh, all my arcs are going one direction or the other. Again, we're just trying to change up the direction and fill in the area as much as possible. I'm just going to do a few more here. And depending on the area that you're filling in, you might, you know, quilt three or four arcs. You might just quilt one. Again, it doesn't matter. And then repositioning. Again, I'm using my ruler to kind of audition where I want that placement to go so that I know that's not going to, you know, cross over. Another thing you can do is if I get to a point where it's hard to reposition the ruler, like maybe. I'm here and I know it's gonna cross over if I do that. I can just start at the middle point. I can use those reference lines and be like, you know what? I'm just gonna start on a half arc and I think that's gonna be fun as well. And then repositioning. So let's kind of turn around so you can see the joy of trying to show you everything I wanna show you. So you can kind of see a little bit there. Again, even if you don't have the petunia ruler, this is something you can do with any ruler that you have. You can use just part of it and rotate it and kind of see which designs you can come up with. It's, it's definitely a fun way to take that shape and, and go in a bunch of different directions with it. Plus, if you're not comfortable with the ruler or making that shape, it's gonna help you get the hang of going around it without having to you know, get the hang of also going in a repetitive motion. But for those of you that are like, oh, I don't, I, I like rules. I want a set number of rules to follow. I want to have something that fills a little bit more defined area. This next one is a really, really fun design where we're gonna take um, that shape and we're going to make that ribbon look. All right, so what I'm gonna do first, first I'm gonna show, I went ahead, it's kind of hard to see. I went ahead and marked a reference line here and that's just to help give me a visual, to help keep my quilting straight since I'm gonna be quilting this in portions. If I'm working on a quilt, I might be able to use a seam for that or you know some other element on the quilt. But in this instance where I'm just kind of working out here in the middle of nowhere, I'm gonna use that reference line. So let me get it positioned. Now what I'm doing for this design is I'm actually using the two shapes or the two curves that are on my ruler. So one second, let me get, I dropped my ruler over here. If I can find it, got it. Let me show you real quick. So this particular ruler has this curve, which makes my half circle, and it also has this little shape right here. And I'm just gonna combine the two to create that ribbon shape. Again, even if you don't have the petunia ruler, um, you can do this with any arc shape ruler or clamshell ruler. So what I love, of course, about needle stops right here is they give me a clear start and stop point. And I also have some reference lines. You know, it's kind of hard to see. Those reference lines I can put on that marked line to help keep my circle straight. Especially on a sewing machine, it's hard to keep your line going straight since your quilt can go any, any which direction. So first I'm gonna position, I'm gonna quilt my bigger curve first. I'm gonna use those reference lines to make sure that it's where I need it to be. And then I'm gonna quilt along that bigger curve. All right, so, so far so good, right? So bigger curve, no problem. The thing we wanna remember with this design is I'm going big, little, big, little. So I've just done the bigger one. Now we're gonna go around one of these littler curves. It can be any particular one, but I'm gonna use the one in the middle and I'm gonna go the opposite direction. Okay, so I'm gonna go big to the left and little to the right. 
Again, using my reference line to be on, or to, to make sure that's lined up straight. The trickiest part with this is making sure it goes straight. Taking a second, kind of eyeballing it, make sure where it's what I it's where I want it to be, and then quilting along it. So there I have kind of like a little bit of S, you know, kind of a fun little shape. So I have big, little, and I'm going to repeat that across the area depending on how much uh, space I have or, or how long I want the design to be. Now I'm working vertically because I feel more comfortable in that direction. However, you could do this horizontally as well. And there I have a nice little row of my shapes, right? So big, little, big, little, change in direction. See, I told you there would be a nice uh, rules to follow with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way back. I mean, this is beautiful on its own, and if you, if you like that, you could leave it there. But with that ribbon design, it kind of gives it like a woven kind of curling look. So I'm going to work my way back, adding more curves. Here's the trick, though, where I have a little one, that's where I'm going to quilt a big one. So right from here, I'm going to position it. I'm going to quilt my big one right over there. So it's going to kind of offset them a bit. It's going to, trust me, it's going to look pretty cool when we're done. So nice along here. using that line again to kind of give me that reference. And now that I have a big one, that's where I'm gonna quilt the little one or the littler curve. And what's gonna happen is they should come close to running into each other, ish. So let's check that out. So there, that's giving me that kind of, I don't know, woven kind of look, that slightly offset look, really, really pretty. And now I have my little arc, so I'm gonna quilt my big arc. And then I have my bigger one, so I'll quilt my littler one. And then we have that kind of shape. Now what's really cool about this design is, is as we're experimenting with the rulers that you have laying around, this is something that you can do with any ruler that has a shape in two different sizes. In fact, we'll see this again with Smiley because it's a great example of um, combining you know, the, the two shapes together. But Again, I can use that in those sashings or those borders to create that, that really cool effect. Now, what we can do for the last one I'm going to show you in this live chat is we're going to combine, we're going to learn how to make circles and then combine the different shapes. So just like I talked about, this, this little guy will make our perfect half circles where we can combine the two to make a circle. One of the questions I get asked sometimes is about using circle-shaped rulers that are just solid circles. Those are a lot of fun, but they're difficult to hang on to. I prefer to use a half circle and just reposition the ruler, especially if it gives me some needle stops to work with, like I have right here. So let's just do a, a bigger circle. I'm just going to position my ruler, and I'm going to go from needle stop to needle stop, holding that in place and going along the curve. So I have my first little half circle. Little trim there. Then I'm going to do the same thing. So I can just rotate my ruler and do the same on the other side. Now it has a little bit of a reference line right here, and I can use that to make sure my design stays straight to my um, quilt, but I can also use it to show where my quilting is going to end up. So you can see that little black right there. So I can see this is where my stitching is. I want that stitching to kind of line up with that reference line. And once I reposition it, then I can go around. And get it as close as I can. So there's my, my bigger circle. This might be something I want to put in the center of a flower or maybe in a, a smaller block, but if I want to make a smaller circle, I can use the tinier scallop in the same exact way, quilting from needle stop to needle stop, rotating, and then doing the same. Just did that first one, flip it around, position it, and then quilt around the other side. And I have my, my littler circle. So using a ruler with those different shapes is going to let you combine them and kind of make it a little bit more versatile and a little bit easier to use. Now let's pretend hypothetically you want to quilt a row of circles. Well, as you can tell, I always come back to my starting point, right? I, I, if I want to quilt more though, I need to move on. And I can do that in a couple of different ways. I can use traveling or I can go about it a little bit differently. Let me show you both and you can decide which one works better for you. 
So if I quilted my smaller circle and I'm ready to add my next one, I can just say, you know what, I'm gonna use the ruler, travel along, and then add my next one. I might decide, oh, that's perfect right there. That's where I'm ready to add my next little circle and continue on. So that's going to allow me to branch off and if I want to add another one I can use some traveling there as well. But there's another way you can go about it. If you know how many circles you want in a row you can quilt all the tops and then come back and quilt all the bottoms. You don't have to quilt them one at a time. So let me just kind of skedaddle over here and let's use the bigger example here. I'm just freehanding at this point but maybe I'll just quilt like two of them. So I'm going to align it where I want to go, go along my inner curve and it's kind of funny, the more you quilt, the more you'll find which feels more comfortable for you. I love going along the inside of a curve better than outside, but you know, you'll, you'll play with that and you'll find which works best. So I've done the first half, like we've already seen, no problem. And normally if I wanted a full circle, I could just come around here, quilt the next part. But if I want to quilt a bunch, I can say, you know what, I'm going to quilt all my half, top halves or sides of it and then come back and do the other. So you can go about it that way. So you can see there I have two little, two little halves. Now at this point, whenever I decide, you know what, that is enough, I'm ready to finish up this row, then it's time to work my way back going the opposite direction. So positioning the ruler and then quilting the other side. And then repeating. Until you have your two little circles. Now, one thing I should stress that I haven't said to this point, this ruler or any machine quilting ruler you use is just a tool. It's not a crutch. It's, it's not going to give you perfect quilting. It'll give you perfect-ish. So I'm getting those lines as close as I can and I'm trusting it to be fine. Now, what's fun about this or, or any of your rulers that have multiple sizes of the same shape is you can combine them together. So here, you know, we've quilted some bigger ones and some littler ones, but you can actually in, or put them inside each other for a slightly different look, especially if you want quilting that's a little bit more dense looking or just, just a little bit different. So here I have my bigger one. I could decide, you know what, I want to put a little bit more detail in there. So I could just go ahead and quilt my littler one on the inside. Again, I guess it helps if I have the right direction. Position it and go around. So you have your bigger and your littler circle on the inside. And of course, from that point, I could decide, oh, I'm going to travel or, or go wherever I want to add my next one. Now, one last thing I want to show you, and then I'll answer any questions you have. So be sure to go ahead and type those in the type chat if you want. You can go about this slightly differently. I'm going to go ahead and just move over here. I can use, I can overlap those center ones. Now, this one's getting a little bit out there, but it, it's kind of a fun way to go about it. I'm going to go ahead and quilt my half, my bigger half. And I'm going to stop. Instead of adding my other side, I'm going to go ahead and quilt that little circle there. So you don't have to do the whole outside before you add the inside. I'm just going to go right into that little, the little circle. Rotate and do the other side. Turn this a little bit so you can see. So now I have my, my bigger one started, a little arc, and then my littler one. And then I can go ahead and finish up the bigger one. It really just depends on how you feel more comfortable quilting it. Now, I don't want you pointing out your mistakes because I don't think I don't I don't think you ever get any better by showing everybody your mistakes. But you know, since this is my my gig, I can do that. I have a little bobble right here. Well, if that happens, what you can do is just throw another little one over it. We'll keep adding stuff until you can't see it anymore. So from the starting point, I'm gonna add another circle that's gonna overlap that center one right there. And I will say the, the way that I found out these designs is I loaded a piece of fabric and I just played around with it until I found some designs that I liked. So I'm gonna add my next little one. And then add, again, the other side. So you kind of get this overlapping kind of shape. Again, it might be a little bit too labor intensive for the quilt you're working on, or may but maybe it's at the center of a block and you really want to show it off and you really love how it looks. So again, I'll just show a couple of the examples and I'll answer your questions. 
if you want to quilt all your circles in a row. For this particular example, I traveled along each one and just added the different ones. Or if you want to do that ribbon idea where you're kind of quilting your bigger pieces and your little pieces right here. So again, really kind of fun, especially if you're working on a strip quilt or you have those reference lines marked. And you can see over here, I just threw in a little circle as well. So a lot of fun that you can create, whether you have the Petunia ruler or, or a different ruler. Now to get any of the PDFs for any of the rulers or to learn more about the Petunia ruler, you can click the link in the description box. But do we have any questions? Thanks for bearing with me through the audio issues. Is that ruler good to use on a long arm as well? Yes, it is. So the Petunia, the Dot, and Smiley are all available in the high shank version. So this is a quarter inch thick acrylic, and you can definitely use it on a, on a long arm. In fact, this sample is all quilted on a long arm, definitely. Do I use spray glue? I wanna make some joke about spray glue for my hair or my nails, but no. So how I base my quilt sandwiches is with fusible batting. But to be honest, this is just a piece of fabric <laughs> thrown on a piece of batting for the example. Um, so I don't, but you can. However you want to make your quilt sandwich, it doesn't matter. Fusible batting, pins. Um, I don't love pins, especially with rulers, because then I always seem to find the pin when I'm trying to position it. It's up to you. All right, so here's a question that came up in the type chat before I went live. So I get on about half an hour before I go live, and I type chat, and the question came up about low shank rulers. So some of my previous rulers were available in low shank. There will not be any low shank versions of this ruler as far as I know at this time. So Creative Grids is the company that produces these. Um, I love the Creative Grids grip. I love the black and white reference lines. Um, and they've made the choice to not make these available in low shank. So I'm so sorry, unfortunately. All right, when I stop at the midpoint line in the ruler, do I center my ruler foot on the line? Yes. Roughly. I'm kind of looking where the needle is and I'm trying to position the needle so that it's directly above um, that line. But this is exactly what I was talking about when I said, you know, it's, it's a tool. It's not to make perfect lines. The ruler is going to shift sometimes, especially as you're getting comfortable with quilting. Uh, maybe it doesn't move as smoothly or you get some little bobbles. It, we're just kind of using it as a tool. But yes, I'm kind of eyeballing it because I have the foot and then the needle. So I want the needle to be lined up with that as much as possible. How do I keep the ruler from moving? It's magic. It's a, it's a special spell I put on it. <laughs> no, um, the ruler has some grip on the back, which helps hold it in place. And I'm holding it firmly and pressing it you know, down and, and moving smoothly. I will tell you the more comfortable you get with using your ruler, the um, easier that gets. But if you need a little bit more stability or more grip, you can use like handy grip or some kind of stuff on the back to help you with that. What kind of gloves am I wearing? So <laughs> I jokingly call these my sexy gloves. Um, I, I always use machine quilting gloves because I, I think I need the help to hold on to it. Um, what I love about these is I can pop off the fingers if I need to do something or um, it just doesn't make my hands sweaty. Some people love gloves, some quilters don't. It just depends on your preference. Um, machine gears are another great glove. Um, but it's funny, in all my classes about half of the quilters like them and the other half don't, so it's up to you. Do I have a favorite ruler? Can I give a recommendation on which to start with? Well, asking for my favorite ruler is like asking which kid is my favorite, you know. No, um, I usually tell quilters, if you're looking to get started, for the first ruler should probably be a straight edge ruler. A straight edge is one of the most versatile rulers, and the point of contact is always the same no matter where you are on the ruler. So getting comfortable with holding it and moving along without having to worry about where the foot is on the ruler makes it a little bit easier. However, once you kind of get comfortable with that, the world is your oyster. The ruler world is your oyster. It just depends on what you want to quilt and what you feel comfortable quilting. Honestly, I feel comfortable quilting flower shapes, so I might not use petunias to quilt flowers. However, quilting circles that are perfect is not easy free motion wise, so I might use that to do that. So think about the designs that you want to quilt and that you struggle with and find a ruler that helps you with it. Uh, but remember, it's not a crutch. Like once you get comfortable with that shape, you might move on from it. So use it as a tool to help you get comfortable with quilting that shape. All right, hopefully you like this format. Hopefully you could see everything I was working on. And again, if you couldn't catch this live, no worries. Leave your questions in the comments and I'll get on from time to time to answer them. But I also know that the viewers are really great about answering the questions as well. And I'll be back next week with another example of the Petunia Ruler. We'll see a couple more designs. And then I'll do a couple video chats with the uh, dot and a couple with Smiley. And we'll kind of play around with that. So I hope to see you all next Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. I hope you all stay safe and have a happy, happy time quilting. Until then, everyone.